Hi there, in this video I want to help you organize your stream deck for your live streaming in Ecamm. And I have to admit it took me a while to get into the stream deck. I was a late adopter, but now I've got it. Uh, we've actually moved through several of them. I've got three I think now that are really happy with it. And I want to encourage you not only to use the stream deck, but to set it up. I love how we do this and a lot of people say to us, looks really cool. How do you set that up? And that's what we want to run through with you today. Now, assuming you've got a Stream Deck, you will have downloaded this software and we've got the Stream Deck XL, which is this bigger version. And if I put this up and you can see the screen at the side, you'll realize that it's exactly the same. It's a mirror copy of what's going on over there. So we use the software to set it all up. Then we close that screen down. We don't have to have that open and we can work away with the Stream Deck. Now, very quickly, assuming you haven't connected this up to Ecamm yet, let me just bring you over here. So on your control panel, you're gonna to wanna to just click this little plus symbol and head over to the store, click on plugins and search for Ecamm. And there it is. And you'll just click install. I've obviously got it installed and that'll come in. And then what you do is by default, you're going to get it look like this. So what they've done, uh, Ecamm have put symbols under all of these different actions that it can do. And what we can do is uh, down on the right hand side here, it might not be obvious straight away because you've got all of these uh, different options, all the different apps that this Stream Deck will control. And if you appreciate that it's not just for Ecamm, we can do all kinds of things. You can see I've got some in Zoom integration on here and you'll see that in a minute. I work my Philips lights with it uh, and other things as well. But if you come to, if you find everything's open, just click on the little arrow at the side of it. And the one we're looking at is Ecamm. All of these symbols over here are ones that are available to us down the side. And you can see really we're creating a button for any action, any command that we want to do in Ecamm. So going live and then that will turn into end broadcast as well. So that's a, a multi-action key that we can put in. Pausing it if you're doing a record only, publishing, uh, preview, run scenes, uh, forwards and backwards in scenes, loads of things in there as you can see. So let's just have a look. So these at the minute are default run scenes that are put in and I don't like them like that. Uh, sorry Ecamm, <laughs> I love the integration and I get that you've got to put something there but for me, I can't read that little writing down there. I personally, rather than looking at symbols, I would rather have the text written there. Now I realize that isn't for everybody. Owen, my son, would much rather have symbols and uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's a visual thing. So I wanna have mine written as text. Let's have a look. What I would say and should have said first off really is that I like to have a new profile on the Stream Deck. So you can see over here that you have different profiles and you can hit new profile and create a new one. And I tie that up with profiles that are going on over here in Ecamm as well. So you can see at the minute, uh, this is the Ecamm Live copy, but when I come to my PVA, my Pro Video Academy Weekly, this is one that we've jazzed up, but this is one that is on uh, most of the time. And then over here in Ecamm, I go to my profiles and I'm doing the same thing. So pre PVA weekly on here uh, corresponds to this. And what I've got, very nicely organized, color coded. So they all say on here, and I only want one or two words if I can help it, because I'm looking down here at a button in front of me while I'm in my live or on my support calls, and I just want to be able to jump straight through. So you'll notice up there in Ecamm, I've got Pro Video Intro, I don't need a button for that because I'm, I'm doing that while I'm just getting ready to go and we're ready on that intro scene. And then I've got front camera. I've got a second camera, which over here says cam two. Um, my front camera plus an iPad, that's on my stream deck as iPad. Then we've got screen share, comments, interview and chat. Um, and then we've got some guest ones in here as well. If I've got uh, me plus a guest, so this kind of thing. Uh, if I've got me plus two guests like this, I want to have a button so I can quickly go to these. And maybe actually, sometimes I might know in advance that I've got guests coming in. Other times it might happen on a call and I say, hey, why don't you jump on? Um, here's the link, which is under another button. <laughs> come and find me on here and you can come in as a guest into the call. And then I can quite quickly go, right, me plus one, there we go. Um, I've also got things like uh, me plus one with their screen. So maybe you're bringing someone on and they're trying to share their screen and do a tutorial, or maybe it's me plus one and it's my screen. Uh, or maybe it's me plus two and it's one of their screens 
And uh, I'm doing this in interview mode because we just allocate a guest to their screen. So I kind of have this set up all in advance. So it starts in Ecamm. You've got to create the scenes for all those different scenarios. And then you over here in Stream Deck, what I would suggest to you is that you create one first of all, and then we clone it across. So if I were to just uh, start with a completely new profile for a minute, and we'll just call this our demo. So I click on the profile when I make it, I wanna edit the profile because I don't wanna have that name on there. So this is just defaulting this to profile one. So let me just change profile one. And in this case, I'm just going to call it demo stream deck. Okay, and uh, here it sits at the top. So it comes in like this. We don't need this little welcome one so we can delete that. And we've got now a complete clean slate. So what did we say we wanted? Right at the top here, we're going to have, and I'm not gonna fill the whole thing out. I just wanna show you because it's important for you to see how to add these in. So front camera is, is what I call it, or me. And so I come down here onto the Stream Deck and in Ecamm Live, run scene is what I'm looking for. So I drag that over. Because I'm already on this, it would default to the scene that I'm on. I want it to be front. And notice that now we haven't got that little symbol, but actually because it's live, it's pulling in a little preview. But down here in front of me, that writing is tiny for the word front. I want something very clear and obvious to go to. So what I do instead of this, this can sit blank and it just says run scene and it will pull the name in from over there in the scenes. I tend to write a title over the top and notice that when I'm doing mine, I've got them all in uppercase as well. So I put front. And then I come over here to this T symbol and I would center it, I would bold it, and I typically push this up to 16. And I think that sits nicely in the middle there then. I don't really wanna have that preview image behind because it makes it a little bit hard to see. And as you noticed on that uh, demo earlier, they're all color coded. So how do we do that? Well, you can actually go and uh, just make your own little symbols, uh, 100 by 100 in Canva, Snapper, some of the tool, and bring them in. That's what we've done previously. I did just discover though that somebody's already done the work for us. So again, come back into this Stream Deck store and there's another one called Icons. If we look for, where are we? General, uh, simple bright colors. So actually if we'd have put up here color, uh, you've got simple bright colors. Now I've already downloaded it and installed it. So I can come out of this, but you'll just click download. So we come out of the store and now when I'm on here, notice this little arrow on the side that says open Stream Deck icon library. Now I should say if you have made your own ones, maybe you want a gradient or something nice like that. That's not a bad idea actually, a little gradient. You can just literally drag it onto where it says front down there and it will replace it. But I'm just gonna open up the library and I'll pop it to the side of here. Elgato give you some anyway with symbols. Again, if you like symbols and you wanna work from that, maybe that's not a bad idea for you. I just want something blank with some color. And uh, so here I am, and why don't we start at the top with this bright red one, and I can just drag that across, and there it is. And now I've got my first button on my Stream Deck. It's bright red, and it says front. Now that is really easy for me to locate and press. And the reason I wanted to show you this is we now don't drag run scene across and go through all that trouble again. So I'm gonna delete that one. What I can do is click on this first one, Command C, Command V. And so now what might I want for this one? Um, maybe I've got a second camera and I wanna be able to cut to that one. So I wanna call this Cam 2 and uh, I'm gonna select the scenes that I've got because we've already made those and there's Cam 2. And you can see how you could work your way along this, just copy and pasting those in and doesn't that look nicer? So that's me bringing in, let me come back to the my example. So as you can see on here then, that's what I've done with all these orange ones. And so I've gone front, chat, screen share, iPad. So when I write on screen, I've got a scene set up for that so that I can have that at the side of me and do my notes. Um, I've got a video in here, Cam 2. If you wanted to jig the order of any of these, you just drag one to the other and it just switches them over. And then what I've done on here then, so I've got another folder over in my scenes with guests. And so I like to keep this logical and in order. So you can see that front camera is just going to be me, nothing else on here. We're not doing chat, screen shares, iPads, things. 
and so the next one down is simply me plus one. So now I've got a guest sitting alongside me and then below that is me plus two. So I can press these buttons and notice that on the actual control panel on here, you can see that it's gone that darker color to indicate that that's the active scene. So then the way I'm organizing this is the next column along is chat. And so this is just me on my zone if I'm bringing the chat in from Ecamm. And if it's me plus a guest and we want to bring in the chat, well, I'm still coming down this second column along. And if I were on the third one, because it's me plus two, then again, I can come in and we're just changing the layout around. But this is me with my two guests on here now. Then we've got screen share with just me. And then I've got uh, screen share me plus guest. And if you know Ecamm and you use the interview mode over here, you will know that you allocate their screen as a guest. So that's why it's saying that. And then the same would be true with three guests down here. Uh, that's defaulted to another scene for now but that would be my screen plus the three guests. You get the idea. Then maybe it's their screen rather than mine or it's my screen rather than theirs. So I've put all those in. They're all the scenes that I've come up with. You might have different scenes. Absolutely fine. This is just a really nice way of, I think, color coding between these and making this very easy to punch to. So I know that all the top row are just me. I know that the second row is me plus one guest. And I know that that third row is me plus two guests. Now you notice that at the bottom of here, I've got some other things. One says light on. And if you see on that screen behind me, uh, when I turn this off, that's my Philips Hue lights that are going on. They're in the ceiling and they're uh, down there as well. So I can hook that in. There's another plugin for Philips. I'm not going to go through that now, but just to show you really how those colors down here work. And I've done the same thing by um, allocating a color to this. In fact, I changed this over earlier and um, I changed my mind between two different colors and you'll see that's why it's still got that one in. And then what else have I got? Well, in Ecamm, if you're used to it, we can show and hide the controls up here. And so I want that on a button. Quite often if I'm on here and I don't want to see this lot, I just press a button and it's gone. The same in live demo. If I'm doing, if I'm showing my screen and I want to go into live demo mode again, I've got that in a button. So that's in a bright red color over there. The green are my overlays. So my orange is scenes, my greens are my overlays. So if I want to add an overlay on here that isn't attached to a scene, it could show up anywhere. For instance, this guest link, I can press it down here and it just pops up. So I'm not a big user of overlays, but if you had, you know, maybe you're more weighted to having a whole load of overlays rather than the scenes, it's totally up to you. Now notice down the bottom right here, I did say that this is for my uh, Pro Video Academy calls. Sometimes we go live into a Facebook group, sometimes we use Zoom. So I've integrated some Zoom functions in this as well. I mentioned at the start, it isn't just for Ecamm. And so notice that again, I've made these in exactly the same way. And um, this is an app, it's not actually Zoom, it's like a third party, somebody's made these for Zoom, but uh, they work in exactly the same way that under Zoom, I've got a, a set of controls here, so I can toggle the mute, I can mute myself. So this is my own. So if I'm on a call with somebody else even, and uh, I, I wanna be muted, or I wanna turn my camera off because I need to just run and do something, I've got buttons for that. So mute me and camera off are the two first buttons that I've got. Then if it's a call that I'm running and I notice that um, someone's got their mic on, I can just hit this button, mute all, and it does exactly that. It'll mute everybody that's on the call. If I want to bring up the chat window, there's a button there, zoom chat. If I want to bring up the participants and see who's in, I can hit that button. And I've then got a record button as well for the cloud. So their buttons that are there, some smart person's going to spot that um, the participants in the chat isn't actually in that list. But what Zoom give you or this app gives you is a shortcut command. So what I've done is to use that. And then I found out from being in Zoom that if I do shift command and H, it will toggle on and off that chat. So I'm able to type that into here, shift command H. And um, as you've seen, I've done this with all the others. I make that title at the top here. So I'm typing this out. I choose the font, I choose the layout and the background color. The purpose really of this, what I'm just trying to show you is look how nice and organized that is. Rather than just accepting the default that potentially comes in looking like this and you're going, 
Um, what's that symbol? I can't quite remember what happens if I do that one. Isn't it nice just to come at it like this and have a completely different lineup? Now we did things, for instance, in our Ecamm Academy. So these ones on the right here are sound effects. These are little some emojis That's that we've amazing. got. And uh, so again, I've got a similar way. This is me, chat, showreel, share screen. And then me plus one, me plus two. It's actually two because Owen was one with me. This was for the last day. We changed it up a bit. So Owen and I were on. We were going through awards. Then it was us bringing one in, bringing two in, or bringing three in. Um, these were little images that we'd got for them with awards. And they're like that because I'm not in that profile in Ecamm at the minute, so it can't see them. But as soon as I open up Ecamm Live Academy profile over there in Ecamm, it'll find them again and we're away. So just different ways that uh, with having different profiles, I can change this around. There's a few options for you of how you can use this. So I hope that's been helpful and useful. Really doesn't matter size. I mean, I've got this larger Excel version because I want to have all these different things here. Other people I know use the smaller one and will just use folders. In fact, Owen quite likes to do that. So for instance, I could have one button that said Zoom. And when I clicked it, it then changes and goes a layer in and has all those Zoom buttons inside that. So different ways that you can use it. But uh, I really do recommend you have a go at this. And how much nicer is it than me having to look up here and jump down with my cursor to find that scene or maybe in a whole wave of overlays going, I know it's in here somewhere. If you've prepped it, you've planned it, you've got it already in advance. All I've got to do is go, right, so if you want to come and join me, here's my link for a guest or whatever else it might be. Uh, I think it's just a much slicker way to work. So what do you think to that? If you've got questions, please let me know in the comments. If you've got thoughts and feedback, I'd love to read that too. Uh, if you're already using it and you've got this set up a different way, why don't you let us know, inspire us. So thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed that and we'll catch you in another video.